Spiritual Teaching 251 Love Each Other 1. At this time you are going to be amazed when you see the wonders that you can do with your gifts, then you will no longer will feel poor or disinherited, because at every step you will have proof that I love you and that I am with you. 2. The gifts were deposited in your spirit from the moment of your formation, but it was necessary that I came to teach you and that you walk a lot, always evolving so that those gifts began to manifest. 3. This time is precisely in which the spirit of humanity has felt that it is living in a new era, that the shine the light of a new day. You have experienced a shudder, a restlessness that has awakened you from deep lethargy in which his gifts and powers were dormant. 4. Now humanity is wondering, it only senses, but the time is coming when it will exclaim with certainty, there is the way, follow it with faith. 5. Who will be able to stop the advance of the spirit of this humanity, once it sets out on the march and what power will it achieve? Can anyone change the path traced by my light? Nothing and no one can stop the spiritual awakening of men when they rise up after the inheritance and the message that the third era has brought you. 6. I could have woken you up a long time ago, but I wanted to reach you at the right time, when you had tired of the deep sleep in which you had fallen and when the horror of your sins and your wars continue to free you from the passions of your matter. 7. Today one people, tomorrow another and the day after another, will wake up illuminated by an inner light that will speak to everyone of spirituality. 8. At the moment of the awakening of these peoples, I will be ready to manifest myself before them. It will be the voice of the Father responding to the call of the children. But in truth I tell you that I will not manifest myself in the same way to everyone, for example. This communication that I have had with you through human understanding was only granted to you and you can consider yourselves as the people who first awakened at the arrival of this age. 9. The time to communicate in this way with you has already been established and there is no spiritualist who ignores the year and the day for the completion of this stage. 10. At the conclusion of my lesson among you, you will have to prepare to spread this seed throughout the peoples of the earth. With that seed you will greatly help your brothers in the critical moments of their awakening. They before the certainty of their presence, before the reality of my message, will prepare to receive me in a spiritual way and as well as among you I manifested and poured myself out according to the preparation of each congregation and each spokesperson. In the same way I will pour out in those, according to the spirituality of each people and the preparation that is in their congregations. 11. Write and keep my word because when the time comes when you make it known, it will be the foundation and starting point for the new peoples that emerge in the world to spiritual life. 12. Do not let my message go mixed with the materiality and the mistakes of those who have served me as instruments, because then you will not have delivered clean the fruit that I have come to entrust to you. I have taught you during a long time to know my divine essence, so that you separate from all human tendencies. 13. The light of my spirit will follow in the footsteps of those who understand me and get up tomorrow interpreting my commands with the greatest fidelity possible, because they, on their way, will see that their struggle, their sacrifices and efforts will not have been in vain. I will come to surprise them in their work, announcing that other peoples are already waiting for them, that they can get up to sow because the seed has reached maturity. 14. There will be spiritual excitement and tears of joy in my disciples when they witness the fulfillment of my word. 15. You will not have to go knocking on doors looking for someone to listen to you, because you will see that they will be your brothers who seek you and call you. It is enough for me that you are prepared and I will be the one to point out the roads, who inspires you what you should do and who puts in your path those who have to approach my people in it demands a testimony of love, of spirituality, of charity. 16. When you come to form with your harmony the people that I expect of you, you will not have to make an effort to make you known, because it will be others who fulfill that mission, spreading the news from heart to heart that there is a people, in whose bosom shines the light of a divine message that is the bread of spiritual life for all men. Seventeen. Trust in me, people. I tell you, if you were to be thrown from the bosom of your society, if you are rejected from cities where you live, I will take you far from your persecutors, 
I will take you to the desert, to the mountain, to the valleys or to the shores of the sea and there I will feed you, as I fed the people of Israel in the desert, sending them manna. 18. Now I bring a new manna for my people, which will soon descend, as soon as trials overwhelm my chosen ones. 19. The tests will come because my word never fails to be fulfilled, they will serve to unite this people as Israel was united in Egypt under the slavery of Pharaoh. 20. When trials come, only those who love me, the strong and the faithful will remain on this path. They will depart the false ones, the hypocrites, those who fear the world, those who did not follow me out of love. It will be enough for me to see that they really love me, to tell the world, this is my people, this is my seed. 21. I assure you that neither water nor bread will lack for those who follow me with all the faith of their spirit, because it has never disappointed no one in their faith. 22. I already hear that some are asking me in their hearts, Master, when will all this be? Is it that you feel fear? Is it that you tremble when I announce the tests? But I tell you, whoever is afraid does not come to the desert, stay in the city, where he likes more oppression because he has become accustomed to servitude and humiliation. But when you open your eyes to the truth and your heart is filled with courage and faith, come to the desert, run in search of the freedom of your spirit and the peace of your heart. 23. You ask me, when will this test come? I tell you that for some it has already arrived and that later it will be presented to others, until all of you are prepared and strengthened. 24. The tests arrive in such a subtle way that many times you don't even realize when they arrived or when they finished what would become of you if I announced the date, the day and the hour for you to wait for them. 25. How many of you are already living in the desert of which I have spoken on this day, and you live fed with the new manna? They are the ones thrown from the bosom of society, have been unknown by relatives and friends. They are those who have been denied the greeting and they have closed the doors of work, are also those who have been judged as heretics, traitors and apostates and have been cast out of the bosom of religions. 26. They suffered slander, bad looks, humiliation, mockery, contempt, but they suffered everything with patience, knowing that they lost nothing and gained the grace to listen to me. 27. They had to retreat to the desert, but not to a material desert, but to a spiritual retreat, even though they have continued materially living where they have always lived. 28. There, in that spiritual retreat, they have found a peace that they did not know before, they have had satisfactions that nobody before gave them, and if at first they felt lonely because they did not know how to perceive my presence, today they thank me because nothing has missed and because no one has beaten them. 29. The life of frivolities that they led before was left behind, everything false, everything superficial past, because for them the time to find the truth and embrace it with all the strength of her being. 30. Blessed are the men of good will and faith, for they will not be victims of their enemies. My power stops the hand that treacherously wants to hurt them, my light surprises those who stalk in its path, so that they continue forward without stopping, because the promised land awaits you, in it there is a party prepared for when you all enter its bosom. 31. My word has touched the fibers of many hearts that have told me, Lord, no one like you to tell the truth, because indeed since we got up to follow you at this time, we had to resist the judgments of our brothers, who were like the bitter herbs that your people ate on the night of liberation in Egypt. 32. Think about your faith, O beloved people, and you will see how those same who did not know you will come to swell your ranks, because they too will be called, they too will be given the opportunity to free themselves from his materialized and false life, to fill the emptiness of his spirit with the divine essence that overflows this work. 33. The call can reach everyone at the same time, but not everyone can respond at the same time. Some will be ready to come, Others will not be able to do so because their spirit has not yet evolved to rise to the fulfillment of their mission. 34. I tell you this so that when I speak to you about the called and the chosen, you may know that in every age there are many called and few are chosen, because I select only the prepared and all those who were called and did not become one of the chosen ones, they will wait a while and will be called again. 35. 
Don't you remember that many times I have told you that I have knocked for the first, second and third time at the doors of your heart and that until you have been alert and prepared, have you come to my call? Therefore do not despair before those to whom my message reaches and shows no interest. 36. Fulfill your mission of making my word known and be satisfied with the immediate or late result of your job. 37. You come to seek in my word the strength that you felt you lacked to separate yourselves from what is superfluous in your life and it is that you had let the customs, habits, traditions and vices of your ancestors take root in your heart. 38. Now the struggle has arisen within you because the voice of the consciousness lets itself be heard more and more clearly. But your heart still resists him because he, in his materialism, leans more towards matter than towards spirit. 39. I bless your inner struggle because it is a sign that you feel love for me, that you grant truth and justice to my word. 40. There are moments when you fear that the flesh will triumph in you, because your faith and your love still feel weak faced with temptations. It is when you rush to listen to me, hoping to find in my word the weapons necessary to combat sin and darkness. You arrive contrite, saddened, wishing that, if possible, my gaze would not discover you although you know that you do not escape for an instant from my sight. Then, when you receive in your heart the tenderness of my word, you let the crying run, in a relief that instant by instant lightens your load. Then you come to think that if I have received you with so much love, it has been because I have not penetrated into your heart nor have I discovered in it all that shames you in front of the Master. 41. Ah, little and weak infants who do not yet know your Master, what would become of you that you come to seek strength in me to no longer sin, if instead of words of forgiveness, encouragement, love and wisdom, I received you with judgments and sentences, with claims, threats and punishments? You would end up one day by doubting these words and then surrendering absolute form in the arms of materialism. Do not say then that my gaze does not discover you in the moments in which I give you my word through the spokesperson. 42. See this group of peasants, servants in this work. They also arrived like you, with hearts full of sufferings and unleashed passions. They too were moved by my word and learned of the inner struggle of the spirit and of the flesh and they also believed that my gaze did not discover them among the crowds, because in my word they did not feel he claimed his sins. Now they are here, in my countryside, carrying out in peace a mission that I have entrusted to them, because at last faith finally reached their heart because serenity was in their spirit after the fight and because they understood that they never could escape my divine gaze, which follows you wherever you go. 43. Still the world and the flesh tempt them and that serves to test their love, their faith and their loyalty and not to sleep. There are those who often challenge the world when their spiritual strength is not yet great enough to free them from all falls. Those are the ones who are falling and lifting. Those who today move away and tomorrow will return until a day come when you are no longer weak and know how to endure in the truth to the end. 44. Of you who today come to grief because you cannot control your weaknesses, I will make new peasants, although it seems impossible for now, that you can be useful to someone. Then you will see a miracle take place in you because you will contemplate your spiritual transformation. Then the weak will feel strong and the unbeliever will be fervent. 45. Blessed are those who, when they sin, repent and cry for having offended me. Blessed are the poor in spirit, because I have come to give them courage and make them triumph over the world, over sin of materialism and vice. 46. Tomorrow you will have to bear witness to the miracle of your conversion, to the wonder of your regeneration. Morning to morning you will be an open book before your brothers and from your pages, that is, from your past, you will extract all the light of the experience and the wisdom acquired in my work, so that you may offer it to your brothers, as the ripe fruit of your fight, your preparation and your triumph. 47. In the nations, in the regions and villages, where men long for my arrival, where the presence of my word, the testimony of my peasants will come like a true dew on the thirsty spirit of men. 48. I have already told you that my witnesses and followers will have to be denied, mocked and persecuted. But they will also be believed and blessed by others that will be another fight that I will also bless because if there is a fight, there will be triumph. 49. So that all men on earth can attest to the truth of this message, I have made those signs prophesied in ancient times, 
prophecies that spoke of my new coming were felt throughout the world. So, when this good news reaches the nations, men will scrutinize and investigate all that has been spoken in these times and surprised and joyful they will find that everything that was announced and promised for my new coming has been faithfully carried out, as befits one who has only one will, one word and one law. 50. I have told you in my teachings that life is the painful path of the spirit and the end of its existence on earth, is his Calvary in which you will try to imitate me, putting my examples into practice. 51. Blessed are the spirits who know how to reach the top with faith and virtue, because at the moment of detaching themselves from the body, they will experience my Father's caress as a reward for their strength and love. Those are the ones who will penetrate without stumble in eternity. 52. My word at this time will help men to understand the full meaning of my law and my doctrine, and the fulfillment that humanity gives them will bring happiness. Happiness of the heart and peace of the spirit, because perfect bliss will only be found by the spirit in the abode to which it belongs. 53. How many opportunities do you have at each step to be good and useful to your fellow men? Every home is a field conducive to sowing my seed. Every city and every town is like a land thirsty for charity and love, and I come to you becoming sour so that you water your consolation among humanity and sow peace. 54. Works, words and prayers are the means that you must and can use to fulfill in the world with the mission to serve and love your brothers. 55. I have taught you the perfect prayer, which is the true language of the Spirit, which puts man in direct communication with the Father. 56. I have given you the gift of the word that is an expression of the light that is in the spirit and of the love that treasures the heart. 57. People who listen to my word, do not say that I am asking too much of you, when I know better than yourselves what you are capable of. 58. Today you feel weak, clumsy, powerless, and unworthy, because you examine your interior and discover many weaknesses, many needs that do not let you feel the pain of others. But first I am going to heal you, to make you feel my peace, to strengthen your heart and to clean your path and then you will not feel shy, you will not have doubts nor will you feel incapable. 59. That is why I have left you listening to me for a while, gradually strengthening yourselves in my word, without sending you to the counties. But when your spirit is saturated with my essence, it will not wait for tests or signs to get up, because you will know how to receive by inspiration what you have to do. 60. Pray, people, and while you pray, I will pour out my peace in all the peoples of the earth. I will bless your homes. I will light your ways. 61. I will give you proof that what I have promised you is true. What proof will that be? The one that you see take place in your life, something that you have been waiting for a long time, something that for some it is impossible to obtain. Some will soon come what is offered by me, I will make others wait. But in truth I tell you, there will not be one who does not receive my proof of love. When that grace reaches each of you, you will remember my word and your faith will increase. 62. Do not despair, do not shed your tears, know how to wait for that hour by practicing my teaching, praying and watching. 63. Do you see how in these moments when you raise your spirit, you forget your sorrows and fill yourself with my peace? Try to always be in front of me, through a complete practice of my doctrine, and you will see my peace and my light on your vicissitudes and works. 64. Understand that your sorrows are not useless, but that you have the mission to temper yourself spiritually and bodily so that you can be part of the number of my sours. 65. Those who will bring comfort to men, those who will raise up those who have fallen, those who will give strength to the weak, they have to be illuminated by the light of experience, they have to be tempered in struggle and trials. Do not fear any picture of pain, do not tremble at the misfortune of a brother, do not flee from pain when hands are stretched out to them in demand of charity. 66. There, among those who have become hardened in vice and pain, you will see many emerge towards the light, seeking the regeneration and spirituality. But, for that inspiration to reach them, you have to place in their hearts a true test of brotherhood, an action that is the ray of light that separates the darkness of the one who suffers. 67. Understand, then, 
that the pain that has accompanied you in many ways has been the chisel that has internally been modeling your spirit for the performance of a delicate mission. My peace be with you.